the beast um, coming uh, from the from the uh, sea, and also the beast, I mean, coming out of the earth. And also we studied about the warning uh, about the false prophets and uh, the characteristic uh, characteristics of the false prophets. And uh, uh, at last we concluded the class with uh, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. Okay. So today uh, we are going to read, uh, I mean, uh, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 uh, to 18. Chapter 13, verses 16 to 18. And the topic is calculating the number 666, 666. Okay. So we will read that portion first. Chapter 13, verses 16 to 18. Yeah. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can be, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark that is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of the man, and his number is six hundred sixty-six. Okay, I know that uh, uh, this number, uh, 666 or 666, is the most complicated and confusing and most I mean, uh, discussed number among the Bible scholars and even uh, related to different nations. Now, still, uh, there are many trying to find out the meaning of this, mem uh, this number and when it is going to be implemented all around the world and what is the importance of this number and a lot of issues, I um, mean, like that. I mean, so especially in uh, uh, verse 18, verse 18, we read that, uh, especially uh, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. Okay. Uh, particularly, it says that, let him who has understanding Calculate the number of the beast. Calculate the number of the beast. Okay. And also it says that the number is of a man and his number is 666. Okay. So here we are trying to understand the plain uh, meaning of this number and when it is going to be implemented worldwide. Okay. You know, according to the, to the uh, total understanding of the Bible, uh, uh, we can we can believe that there will be a worldwide implement, implementation of this number during the time of the Great Tribulation period. So during the time of the Great Tribulation period, you can see uh, the the worldwide implementation of uh, the number uh, six hundred and sixty six. We know that there are many people studying about this, and they have uh, uh, different opinions about uh, this number and how it comes and uh, what is going to happen and when it is going to uh, implement uh, uh, into, into the people and when it is going to insert into the body of a person and all those things are there. But we are just trying to understand, I mean, and we are just trying to calculate how it comes, uh, I mean, 666 and what is the real meaning of that and uh, uh, all those things, okay? Now, one thing that we should uh, keep in our mind is that since man was created by God on the, on the sixth day, the number six is considered as the number of men. Okay, since man was created on the sixth day, the number six is considered as the number of men. And the number seven is the number of perfection and the number of God. Okay, number seven is the number of perfection and the number of God. Okay, sometimes it is it is not mentioned in, in the Bible that the six is the, the number of man or seven is the number of God or perfection, but we can assume that from uh, different references and also from different portions of the Bible, we understand that, uh, I mean, that six, the number six is the number of man. So if the number six is the symbol of imperfection and failure, we can assume that 666 is equal to failure plus failure plus failure. That means total failure. Okay, we are studying about the significance of that number, 666. You know, when we study about that, you can see that the failure is there, the failure is there, and failure is there because that is the number of man. At the same time, if the number seven is the number of God and perfection, 
the divine trinity is considered as 777, which means Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That means victory, 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 and the total victory is there. So whenever we, we think about these portions, we have to understand one thing. You know, Satan, you know, the man already fallen, and the Satan also is a failure. You know, but God, Jesus Christ, and he, Holy Spirit, Father God, I mean, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is getting always victory. So in that way, we can think about this. And also, you know, when we study uh, chapters uh, 12 and 13, we saw there that the satanic trinity is there, okay? The dragon, uh, what is it? The beast and the false prophet. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So these are the uh, satanic trinity in uh, chapter 12 and 13. So, in, you know, you can understand that in recent years also, we have seen a worldwide increase in the use of numbers for identification, you know, in, especially in the United States, you know, we, we understand that in different places, uh, uh, in, in fact, the numbers are more important uh, to, to, to computers than names, you know, so the computer field, they are using, uh, most of the time they are using numbers instead of uh, the names of the people, okay? So we can see that in these days, worldwide, there is an increase in the use of numbers for identification or identifying a person, okay? Especially in our country. So even you can see number 666 in, is, is printed uh, on uh, uh, some, of the, some of the objects and uh, it is projected in some places in these days, okay? So you, it, is, it is very visible that, you know, somewhere in some places, it is not world, world, uh, worldwide uh, implication of the implementation of the 666, but still there are uh, some objects in there, some items, and it is projected there, this number. So let us assume that this is an, is an, is an advanced warning of what will happen on earth when the Antichrist is in control. So during the time of the Great Tribulation, uh, and a Christ will be uh, controlling all over the world. And there, when I mean, you will understand that this uh, number 666 will be implemented on every person. And we will see what is, what is going to happen if, that, if one person is not uh, accepting that number. No, but we, we have to thank God that we, the believers, will won't be here on earth during those days. Man. And we will be with the Lord while the number 666 is implemented worldwide, amen? So we have to think about that also, even in verses 16 and 17, okay? In verses 16 and 17, we read that this number or this mark will be given on their right hand or on their forehead. Okay, listen. So in 16, verses 16 and 17 of chapter 13, it says that this number or this mark, will be given on their forehead or on their on their right hand okay and no one will be able to buy or to sell without this mark or number on his right hand or forehead okay so if you see that you know when when antichrist is ruling in the in the time of great tribulation if somebody is there uh, who is refusing to receive this number on their forehead or on their right hand what will happen they will not be able to buy anything or they will not be able to sell anything without this number or without this mark on their hand or on their forehead okay so remember this number will be uh, this number will not be uh, implemented secretly but will be after a public announcement only it will be implemented you know some people are thinking that okay or oh, this number 666 will be implemented uh, worldwide, uh, I mean, very secretly. No, no, it is going to be like, it's not going to be like that, but this number will be implemented on the people after a public announcement. This is going to be the kind of expression of our submission to Antichrist, okay? So that means, you know, that the people will be submitting themselves to the Antichrist, to worship Antichrist. Then when they submit to the Antichrist, this number will be upon those people, maybe on the right hand or on the forehead. Okay. So, uh, for example, when a person uh, says that I need this uh, mark or I need this number on my hand or my forehead, 
then it will be inserted into, into his body. To get this number, that person will have to decide that he would like to worship and follow the Antichrist. Okay, so after taking a decision that this number or this mark will be implemented or inserted in the body of that person, okay, and that person should say that I would like to worship Antichrist and I would like to worship for, or follow this Antichrist, then only this uh, number will be inserted into his body. So, and remember, if a person refuses to have this mark or this number, he will not be able to buy or sell anything, okay? And you know that, uh, why Antichrist will force to insert this number, okay? What will be the reason that Antichrist is forcing the people to insert this particular number, no? Uh, the reason is he is trying to imitate God. Okay, we will we'll be coming to that point. Antichrist also is trying to imitate God, okay? You know, we have seen already that in many places, uh, Antichrist is trying to imitate Jesus Christ, okay? Whatever Jesus did, Antichrist also is, uh, I mean, trying to do the same thing, okay? Here also we can understand why this Antichrist is forcing the people to get this number or to insert this number on, on their body, okay? There is a reason that he is trying to imitate God. How we can say that? For example, let us read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. Yes. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be front, front, frontlets between your eyes. Okay. So here, God commanded the people of Israel that you have to bind or place the commandments of God on your hand and on your forehead. Okay, listen. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8, God is giving a commandment to the people of Israel that you have to bind or you have to place the commandments or the word of God, the scripture, uh, in, a, in a particular way as a, as a box and you have to make it and you have to just bind it uh, on your forehead and your hand. So now the people of Israel, even today, they uh, recently I have seen a, seen a picture about uh, the people of Israel, the Jewish people, they are wearing that one and they have that, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, the, they, they, they are binding the, the, the commandments of God on their forehead and they are just placing their, uh, the word of God, the commandments of God on their, in, on their right hand also. So this is happening even today. So this is what actually God was not intended to do this thing as, as a literal meaning, in, in, to take this in a, in a literal meaning, but they are doing it that way. At the same time, God has commanded this to the people of Israel. You know, the same thing Antichrist is trying to imitate here and forcing to have his mark on the people of, of this world. You know, God commanded to the people of Israel and here Antichrist also will be commanding and he also will be uh, producing a commandment that you have to, you have to bear my name or by number or my mark on your forehead or on your right hand, okay? So listen very carefully. For the children of God, we have an assurance that we are already sealed with the mark of Jesus Christ. You believe that? No, we are already sealed with the mark of Jesus Christ. And it says that in Galatians chapter 6, verse 17, that that is the brand max of Jesus Christ. We have already the seal of Jesus Christ. And also we have, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter one verse 13, it says that we are also sealed with the Holy Spirit. So there is nothing that we have, nothing to worry about our future because it's in the hands of God, amen? So we will be with the Lord at the same time. Many things will be happening on this earth um, during the time of the I mean, reign of Antichrist and the control of Antichrist, but we won't be here. The believers of God will not be here we will be with the, the Lord. Even though today, you know, we understand the, the, the anti-Christian system or uh, anti-Christian uh, works are prevailing all over the world. You know, there, are, there are many, uh, many people, I mean, uh, influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist and they are working hard 
to persecute the Christians and the Christian churches, you know, but the true believers must not be a part of that, but let us, let us be found, I mean, faithful to the Lord in these, uh, I mean, last days, I mean, so we must be faithful in the, in the, in the sight of God, and we must be follow and worship, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, so there are many people following and uh, um, uh, worshiping the satanic, uh, I mean, uh, a system and everything, but we are worshiping the true God, the true God, and he is the almighty God, I mean, so we will go to the, I mean, chapter uh, 14, 15, and 16 now, okay, so that chapter 13 is over with the number of 666, and we are going to the next portion, that is the heading is the, yes, the victorious voices, the victorious voices. So the victorious voices, that heading covers chapters 14, chapters, I mean, chapters, yeah, 14, 15, and 16, three chapters together, okay. Um, I'm reading chapter 14, verses one to five. Um, wait, wait, one second, one second. Uh, I'll give you, okay, yeah, one second, uh, Elsa. You know, in chapter 12 and 13, in chapter 12 and 13, we saw that many, many dangerous things are happening, okay? In chapter 12 and 13, we saw that there are many dangerous things happening, like uh, the war in heaven, uh, the war on earth, and uh, the great dragon, the beast out of the sea, the beast out of the earth, and also the Satan trying to persecute the people of God with different strategies. Okay, we already saw that all those things. Okay, Satan is trying to persecute the people of God with different strategies. So totally, it was a it was a horrible situation in chapter twelve and thirteen, right? But when we come to chapters fourteen through sixteen, the scene is changed. The situation is changed. Okay. So the, all the horrible things and all the great dragon, the war in heaven, war on earth and persecution and uh, the strategies of Satan, everything happened in chapters 12 and 13. But when we come to chapters 14, 15 and 16, we understand automatically that scene is changed and the situation is changed. So the horrible and the dangerous scene is changed to a victorious scene, to a victorious scene. The horrible and the dangerous scene is changed into a victorious scene. So the victorious, you know, you can see many things from that portion, like uh, the victorious voice of the uh, 144,000 people, you know, the Jewish people, the victorious voice of the 144,000 people, and the victorious voices of angels, the victorious voices of angels, and the, and the voices of the victors and also the voice of fulfillment, okay? So these are the things that we are going to look into and we are going to get some of the uh, uh, insight from those points. The first of all, let us study about the victorious voice of the 100,000, 100 uh, uh, yeah, uh, 144,000 uh, uh, group of people, okay? So the first one is the victorious voice of the 144,000, okay? That is from Revelation chapter 14, verses one to five, okay? 14, chapter one to five. Yes, Elsa, now you can read. Then I looked and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000 who had who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Yeah. And I heard a voice from heaven like a war of roar of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women for they are virgins. It is these who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for, for God and the Lamb. And in their mouths, no lie was found, for they are blameless. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, I believe that uh, you already uh, learned about this uh, 144,000 people from chapter 7, right? From chapter 7, we already covered that portion 
uh, but we know that who are who are those people. So this this special group of uh, Jewish men from twelve tribes of Israel was sealed by God, and now they are seen on the Mount Zion with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we know that who are these people. Okay, these people are known as the uh, tribulation saints. Tribulation saints. That means the people those who uh, accepted Jesus uh, as their Messiah during the time of the great tribulation. So these people are selected and these people are singing now and these people are standing uh, 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 with God in, on, on the Mount Zion and uh, they were sealed by God. Okay, so this scene in Revelation chapter 14 is the assurance to God's people that he cares for his own and finally will take them to glory. Okay, so this group of people, 144,000 people, are a selected, specially selected people from among the uh, Jewish tribes, 12 tribes. At the same time, God is caring for them in that particular time. But today, we have to understand, we have an assurance that God's people are cared by God and God's people are protected by God and he will take them into his own finally and take them to the glory of God. Amen. So here we see they are not only standing, you know, in, in, the, in that particular uh, 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 portion we understand, these people are not only standing with the Lord, but they are also singing the songs and singing the new song. Okay, it is, it is written like that. They are singing the new song from Revelation chapter 14, verses two, three, uh, 2 and 3. We understand that. They are singing. Okay, And why they are singing? Why these 144,000 uh, Jewish people or that group of people, why they are singing? Because of the special experiences they had during the tribulation. They have a new song to sing that others cannot learn. It is particularly written there. They are singing a new song, but they, the others cannot learn that song. Others cannot sing that song. Okay, And that encouraging us to know that I mean, one day our sorrows will be transformed into songs. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is our assurance that one day, still, we have many sorrows here. And we have many trials in this world. We have many sufferings in this world. But one day, I mean, God will change all the sorrow, sorrowful situation and transform the sorrowful situation into the songs. Amen. So these people, these 144,000 people, now they are singing a new song. They are singing a new song because they have experienced the power of God during the time of the tribulation. Amen. So they have a new song and they are singing that song and that would encourage every one of us that when our situation will be changed one day and we also will be singing unto the Lord. Even today we are singing and on those days and I mean the, 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 the situation when we are going through the troubles and when we are going through the persecution, there also we will sing a new song unto the Lord because God is in control. Amen. So now we will study from, uh, from maybe verses 4 and 5, chapter 14, verses 4 and 5. We are going to uh, look into only those two verses especially. And there you can see the qualities of the heavenly worship team. Okay. In this particular portion, you will understand there is a, there is a group of people and that is the, the number of those people is uh, 144,000 people. You know, when they are worshiping, when they are singing the new song, they have some qualities. They have some, I mean, qualifications and characteristics of those people. You know, let us see. It's a, it's a heavenly worship team. It's a heavenly worship team. And how they are singing and what is their qualities. Let us see. First of all, it is written there that they are separated. Listen, they are separated. They are separated. That means purity. I mean, they have the purity morally and spiritually they are pure. Okay. They are singing the song I mean, with a quality. What is the quality? The first thing is they are separated people. They are separated people and they have the purity. I mean, morally and spiritually they are pure in the sight of God. And, and secondly, Secondly, it is written there, they does not belong to the earth. That means they are redeemed out of the earth. 
okay they does not belong to the earth that means they are redeemed out of the earth and again it is written there that they are not defiled with woman they are not defiled with woman you know they are not defiled with woman doesn't mean that they are unmarried they are not unmarried but the meaning is while most of the people bow down to the images of the beast and the antichrist the 144000 people were faithful to the true true god to the true god okay so this is that we have to understand you know when we worship god this is a heavenly worship team worshiping here at the same time as we are the people those who are worshiping the living god the people those who are following the commandments of god the people those who are taking the name of god on our, in our, in our mouth i mean so we must be keeping ourselves holy and pure you know it says that this group of people they are not defiled with woman okay woman in the sense it is mentioned here the world okay so it's not uh, the the real woman it is says no okay that means they are all married they are not unmarried but the meaning is you know while all the people are bow downing they they heard into the into the i mean image of the beast or the antichrist when this group of people are not ready to bow down their head i mean before the antichrist and they are faithfully serving god and faithfully worshiping the living and almighty god I mean the next thing the next thing which is which is mentioned in that portion is they follow the lamb wherever he goes the lamb means jesus christ okay so they follow the lamb wherever he goes you know wherever the lamb is going wherever the jesus christ is moving you know this group of people are following them but you may be asking a question where we are okay this group of people are the uh, 144000 people from the jewish really uh, jewish background and from jewish tribes but where are we the believers the new testament believers no remember we are with jesus christ there we are with jesus christ but these people are selected and they are separated out of the great tribulation time out of the great tribulation time okay we are before that before the great tribulation we the believers will be with jesus christ i mean uh, during the time of the rapture of the church okay by the return of jesus christ we will be caught up from this earth and we will be with jesus christ okay so this group is now it is said that they are always following the lamb wherever he goes I mean now again it is written there that they are purchased as first fruit to god they are purchased as first fruit to god that means during the time of the great tribulation this group of people will be purchased that means they will be separated this group of people will be separated as a first fruit to god from the tribulation from the tribulation because we are not there in the tribulation we will not be there in the tribulation this group of people will be the first fruit of i mean god and again the next point is written there that they are not liars they are not liars avar hoshku parayunavar alla okay avar vaayil hoshku illa enna avada parannirikkunu that means they are not liars avar nuna parayunavar alla okay that means they are keeping their mouth always holy and pure okay and again the last thing which is uh, mentioned there is uh, they are blameless okay they don't have anything to blame them i mean they are blameless okay spotless okay so these are the qualities of those people those who are worshiping god during that time okay so uh, we have seen that the first victorious voice is heard from the group of 144000 people okay so they are singing a new song okay they are singing a new song so we have to remember that even if we have the trials even if we have the sufferings in this world I mean god has given a new song in our mouth and we are singing that song knowing that our trials will turn into a triumph right so we know that we have trials in this world we have sufferings in this world but we have given a new song to sing with our mouth and we we are singing that song always even today also we are singing that new song and worshiping god and we know that one day 
I mean, the trials will be turned into the triumph. Okay, so Urikil, Namada Namada Katala Kamari, Namada Vijayatileke, Urakosha Tileke Bogan, the Vasunda, in the Namada Vishusikina the Wandana, I mean, E. Prestinga de la Nadu Namadi and the Kartavi Sando Shikina, we are singing a new song even in the midst of the trials that we know that one day these sorrowful things and these trials will be changed and transformed into a triumphant situation. Okay, that's that's the reason that, you know, when, when Paul and Silas, they were. I mean, uh, in prison, they were in prison and they were singing and worshiping God while they were in prison. And, and when, when, when they were going through the persecution, right? Paul and Silas, when they were going through the persecution, when they were going through the trials, you know, they were singing, God, singing and worshiping God. Okay, That should happen in our life also. Let us also worship God always. I mean, whatever it may be, whatever hardship that we are facing, whatever difficult situation that we are facing, Nothing to be worried about, but let us sing unto the Lord and praise the name of the Lord always. Amen. So now we will go to the second voice, uh, uh, which we can see there in uh, maybe verses 6 to 20. Okay, we don't have time to read all those portions, but we will we will uh, go through that. Maybe, maybe you can read Elsa uh, verses 6 and 7. Chapter 14, chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Only two verses. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. Okay, so the first voice, the first voice of victory was by the 144,000 people. Jewish people. Okay. Then the second part, the second voice is heard from the angels. So now the, now the angels are singing the songs. The angels are bringing the voices and praising God for many, many things. Okay. Let us see, you know, here we can see maybe the, the, the voices of the angels. Okay. It seems uh, almost, uh, almost six different angels are there involved uh, in, in this scene. Okay. So there are mainly six different angels, okay? It is mentioned in those portion, okay? And each with a particular message to proclaim. So each angel uh, is proclaiming a different message. So the first message, first voice is that the voice of that angel about the judgment is come. The judgment is come. Verses six and seven, the judgment is come. So in this present age, the angels are not privileged to preach the gospel, but that responsibility has been given to God's people or for the believers or the New Testament church. We know that we know that uh, portion very clearly. Now, this present age, the angels are not privileged to preach the gospel. You know, they don't have any, they don't have any 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 appointment to preach the gospel to anybody of this world. But we have that responsibility and we are appointed, every person, every believer is appointed to proclaim the gospel, right? Now, here we understand this angel is proclaiming an eternal gospel. This angel is proclaiming an eternal gospel, eternal gospel. We know that, you know, angels had uh, got only, only one opportunity to share the, share the gospel or good news in Bible. Anybody can say that when it was, when angel was proclaiming, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. Huh? To Mary? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that was only opportunity for angel that uh, God has given that, you know, uh, the share, share the good news to good news of Jesus Christ to Joseph, okay, to Joseph it was given, to Joseph it was given that uh, it was right, uh, right before the birth of Jesus Christ in, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, okay, we read that, uh, I mean, uh, angels was, uh, angel was proclaiming about uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ to Joseph, the, the, the father of Jesus, okay, and it says that Mary will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus 
for he will save his people from their sins. Okay? This is the first time that angels, angel was sharing about Jesus or about the, about the good news. Okay? But after the death of Jesus, the angels doesn't have the permission to proclaim the gospel. This is very interesting to understand. You know, after the birth of Jesus Christ or after the death of Jesus Christ, angels doesn't have the permission to proclaim the gospel. Now they are not proclaiming any gospel. Okay? They have any, some other duties, but they are not proclaiming the gospel. They don't have the responsibility. But that responsibility is given to the New Testament church now. No? But again, you have to think about after the rapture of the church, okay, after the rapture of the church, that means during the time of great tribulation, the angel will get one more opportunity to proclaim the eternal gospel to those who live on earth. That is particularly mentioned in, in, in verse 7. Okay, in, in verse 7, it says that, you know, after the uh, that means after the return of Jesus Christ or after the after the rapture of the I mean, church, New Testament church, during the time of the great tribulation, the angel will get one more opportunity to proclaim the eternal gospel to those who live on earth. That means it is, it is particularly written every nation, to, to every nation, to every tribe and to every tongue and to every people. Okay, so angel will be proclaiming that eternal gospel to all the people. That is going to happen. And again, the second angel is proclaiming about the fall of Babylon. Okay, the second angel is proclaiming about the fall of Babylon. That is from chapter 14, verse 8. Okay, in chapter 14, verse 8, we read that the, the, the second angel is proclaiming the fall of Babylon. Okay, so we will study about the fall of Babylon maybe from chapter 17 in the next class. So I'm not going to explain anything about that point because we'll be studying about the, the, the doom of Babylon predicted in chapter 17. Okay, we will go into that maybe next class. So now here the second angel, the other angel is proclaiming about the fall of Babylon. And the third angel is proclaiming about the eternal judgment. Okay, so they are making some proclamations. They are making some voices and saying that this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Okay, the third angel is proclaiming about the eternal judgment. The eternal judgment. Okay, that is from chapter 14 verses 9 to 13. Chapter 14 verses 9 to 13. Okay, so... Um, when uh, can, can you read maybe verse verse nine, uh, Elsa? And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If anyone worships the beast in its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his head, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with the fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb." Okay, thank you, Elsa. So, actually, this is a warning. This is a warning during the time of the Great Tribulation to escape from the wrath of God, to escape from the wrath of God, okay? If they are not repenting, there will be an eternal judgment. Listen, this is a, this is a warning to the people, those who are living in the Great Tribulation and says that if you are not repenting, if, if you are not repenting, there will be an eternal judgment. You know, uh, we must also, also keep in mind that God um, has I mean, repeatedly warned sinners and given them opportunity to repent. You know, even today also, God is giving uh, many chances and many opportunities to the people, to the sinners to repent about their sins, to repent about their sins. But there are many people, they are not ready to repent about their sins. They are not ready to follow Jesus. They are not ready to accept Jesus. But even today also, we can receive that warning that if we are not receiving Jesus and if we are not repenting about our sins, I mean, our, our destiny will be the eternal punishment, the eternal hell, you can call it like that. I mean, but here, we understand during the time of the Great Tribulation, the first angel here 
here invited sinners to turn to God, right? The first angel inviting the sinners to turn to God. And the second angel, uh, second angel is giving the warning that the whole Babylon system would be destroyed. The Babylon system would be destroyed. We will, we will explain all those things uh, in, the, in the next class. Okay, it, it, that means, you know, if people continue in their sins, even after God sends judgments and warnings, then they have only one option. Listen, if the people are continuing in their sins, even after God's judgment, even after giving some warnings, you know, they have only one option. That is the eternal punishment. That is the eternal punishment or eternal hell or lake of fire, whatever it may be. Okay, so... Uh, I, when I was reading this portion, uh, I was just thinking like this, you know, this is actually a warning for today's world also. Okay, This is also a warning for today's world, you know, that it, it, it is better to reign with Christ forever than with Antichrist for a, for, a, for a few short years. Okay, so what we are, what, what we are desiring in our heart, you know, it is better to reign with Jesus Christ forever than with Antichrist for a few short years. Maybe, you know, during the time of the first uh, uh, half of the time of seven year great tribulation, we know that uh, Antichrist will be very politely uh, speaking to the people and uh, he will be uh, make, he will be trying to or pretending to, to make the peace among the nations and everything. And all the people will be thinking that, okay, this is the, this is the pol right political leader for every one of us. And we have to be one. Uh, every nation should come together. And we and, and Antichrist will be the, the real leader of our, our nation. But that will change. That will change after, after a period of half, uh, maybe three and a half years. That will change. And uh, he, he will try to persecute the people. And they, he will force the people to worship him. And he will force the people to follow his commandments. Okay, So we have to understand it is better to endure persecution patiently now. If you have a persecution, if you have a suffering, if you have a trial now, you endure that and go through that. Man, it, is, it is better than to escape it and suffer throughout the eternity. If we are not going through the persecution now, if we are not ready to, I mean, uh, admit that, if we are not ready to, I mean, accept Jesus now, if we are not ready to go through the trials of this world now, then we will be suffering throughout the eternity. We will be suffering throughout the eternity. We don't have any chance to accept Jesus. So this is the right time that we understand that, uh, I mean, we are supposed to, I mean, uh, receive Jesus and we are supposed to follow the commandments of Jesus Christ in the word of God. Okay, now the next angel, we will, we will go to verse 15. Can you read uh, verse 15, Elsa? Verse 15, yeah. The next angel is proclaiming about, what is that? The harvest is ripe. Um, yeah. 15, 14, 15. Yeah. Uh, and another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, put in your sickle and reap for the hour to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. Okay. What is that? The, the next angel is speaking about the harvest is ripe. That means the, the, this is the right time that we are going to make a harvest. Okay. Everything is okay. Everything is ready. And this is the right time to, to, to harvest. Okay, so that is the next one. And the next angel, the last, or, or the, the, the next angel is proclaiming about the battle of Armageddon. Okay, uh, that is in uh, verse 17. Verse 17, you know, it is not particularly written about the uh, battle of Armageddon or something, but we already learned it uh, in the previous classes that uh, that is speaking about the Armageddon war, Armageddon Yudham. Okay, so uh, this next angel is proclaiming about the battle of Armageddon. And again, in uh, next two verse, it says that uh, the last angel, the, the, the sixth angel is proclaiming about the power of over fire, the power over fire. Okay, so these are the main things that we understand, the voices of the angels. Okay, first of all, we have seen there is a voice of 144,000 people. Okay, they are proclaiming many things. And secondly, we have seen that this is the 
voice of the angels. Angels are proclaiming many things to the people, those who are living on the earth during the time of the great tribulation. Now, we will go to the third voice, the voice of the victors. The voice of the victors from chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Read Elsa, yeah. Chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw what happened to the sea of the glass mingled with fire, and also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name, standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing a song of, of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations, who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Okay, now we are entering into chapter 15. Okay, so chapter 14 is over, and uh, we are entering into chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Okay, so this is the this is the voice of the victors that means the victorious people okay in their song in their song uh, the, the tribulation saints are praising god's works okay they are praising god's works as well his ways okay so they have many things to 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 tell to god they have many things to praise god about the god's works and as well as his ways Okay, how they were brought together into this situation. You know, we have to know one thing that the earth delvers certainly would not praise God for his works and they would never understand his ways. But God's works are great and marvelous. Amen? God's works are great and marvelous and his ways are just and true. Even when you read Psalm number 145, verse 17, we understand. You know, these, the, the people are not complaining about, I mean, the ways of God or permitted these people to suffer. They are not asking oh, why you are causing us to suffer these problems. They are not complaining anything, but they are ready to worship God. They are worshiping God. You know? It would save us a great deal of sorrow if we would, if we would acknowledge uh, when God's sovereignty in the same way even today also. That means the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. When understanding that, we will understand that the voice of victors is very real because they are always praising God. They are remembering the work of God. They are remembering the ways of God, how God was I mean, bringing them into this place and how God was blessing them and how God was protecting them. Amen. Children of God, this evening, we have many things to remember the work of God. Amen. The ways of God, how we were brought into this place. Hallelujah. So we are, when we are thinking about the works of God, when we are thinking about the ways of God, it is marvelous. Amen. We cannot understand the depth of the ways of God. We cannot understand the depth of the work of God, but we understand that God is in control and God's sovereignty is existing today also. And we are believing in that. Whatever happens in this world, that will not touch the people of God, that will not touch the children of God because we are in the hands of God. Our future is in the hands of God. Remember, God is the eternal king. Amen. God is the eternal king, but he is also in charge of the history. He knows everything, what is going to happen. You know, maybe after, after many years, what is going to happen? God knows. Okay. Nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens by accident. Everything happens according to the foreknowledge of God. Okay. So God knows everything, even I mean, what is going to happen and when the, the, the return of Jesus is going to happen, when the great tribulation is going to happen, when the judgment is going to happen, and when the thousand year of, uh, uh, what is that, millennial kingdom is going to happen, everything, when the eternity is going to happen, everything God knows, and God is working according to his will and purpose. And we will go to the last voice, that is the chapter 15, verses 5, 
through chapter 16, verse 21. It's a, it's a, it's a lengthy portion. It's a lengthy passage. We don't have enough time to, I mean, go through all those portions, but we will just, I mean, I'll, I'll give you some of the, uh, some of the points from that portion. That is the voice of fulfillment. The voice of fulfillment. That means chapter 15, verses 5 to 16. Chapter 16, verse 21. You're not going to read all this portion. Okay. So this is the final voice of the fulfillment of the judgment. Listen, this is the final voice of fulfillment of the judgment, especially in uh, chapter 16, verse 17. Elsa, would you please read that? Only that verse, 17. 16, 17. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. Okay, what is that? We read there, there was a voice heard that it is done. That means that is a fulfillment. Okay, so it is going to end. It is going to end. It is done. You know, actually, this whole passage tells us about seven veil judgments. We know that we already discussed about all those things a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm not, uh, I mean, uh, spending time to, to repeat all those points because we already learned about I mean, from chapter 16 already, because when we were studying about the judgments, uh, this was the last one. This was the last one. And we mentioned about uh, the seven veil judgments. Okay. And then the Kalashangala Kurche, Namal already Padichikarinya Dana. So I'm not been spending more, uh, more time for that to, to repeat all those things, but we know that. Okay. What is going to happen in, in, in chapter 16? So by this, you know, we understand that even God is preparing everything and God has planned everything. Everything happens by the foreknowledge of Jesus Christ. So let us understand that, that uh, I mean, God is in control every time. Okay. So God can do anything according to his purpose for his own glory. Okay. You know, so by, by, by this, we are concluding the study up to chapter 16 now. Okay. And we will, we will be studying from chapter 17 uh, in, the, in the next class if the, if the, if the return of uh, of christ is tiring okay so we'll be studying about all those things maybe from chapter 17 so we are closing now with uh, with a conclusion of this portion uh, by uh, chapter 16 it's a great thing that we could uh, cover up to chapter 16 amen so within few classes we'll be completing book of revelation only 22 chapters are there so it is now 16 and we'll be continuing from chapter 17 uh, in the in the next class, I mean. So let us all uh, 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 close our eyes in the presence of God as we were listening from the. Uh,